My next guest uh, is making some of the most compelling hip hop videos anywhere. As I said before, he's been a long time collaborator of Chicago's own Rhymefest. And he's also, away from music videos, made a career of kind of chronicling the whole Chicago hip hop scene. Uh, before we bring up Coney Rock, I wanted to, uh, we're going to show, we have a rough cut. This is for the first time ever. This is a world premiere. I feel a little bit like Martha Quinn here. Uh, of the new video for Rhymefest's upcoming, upcoming single, it's called Chicago. Gentlemen, Coney Rock. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm not Coney. What? No, I'm not. Sorry. Where is that, he? That, he's right there, actually. <laughs> We've never met. So come on up. But that was very funny. <laughs> Um, I was like, I was like, uh, it doesn't matter. I was, like, I, was like, I was like, let's do something that's never been done. That's been done? No, it's been, how are you, man? Good to see you. Um, you know, I've seen pictures of you, and I was a little bit like, but what was I going to do? You've, you've gained weight? You're fat now? You know? <laughs> He's, uh, that's my, that's my bodyguard. Why do you need a bodyguard? Come on, hip hop is so full of shit. <laughs> I need a bodyguard because my bodyguard's got a bad attitude. <laughs> All right. My bodyguard. That was so great, by the so way. I, I'm looking forward to the second half. Of oh, it. I'm looking forward to completing it. <laughs> There's a cliche of the rap video, which has the you know the naked girls dancing around on. Yeah, it. I get asked to make those a lot. Well, but but you, it seems like you have made a career. When you went into hip hop videos, were you like? I want to get. I want to show that there's something else that can be done other than that stereotype. Uh, uh, yeah, I just. Uh, well, I, I guess I just don't think that way. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I mean, I I don't think like I want to do not that. I mm -hmm. just think I just want to do something I haven't seen. Okay. So just have. And to you've be seen. That. The let's say let's say all the videos were like that. I might make. Then you would do the girls. The one with the girls. <laughs> <laughs> Your bio describes your roots in hip hop as a b boy break dancer. Tell me about that time in your in your life. Uh, well, I still break dance. I still okay. break. Um, I like to say breaker. Okay. Some, like well, it said it said no, no, break dancer fine. on the on your bio. No, no, on no, your no that's official funny. bio. <laughs> 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 then I have to call myself a break dancer. <laughs> no, but uh, well, I, I was like because a lot of times like break dancers, like a lot of the old school break dancers were called break dancers and decided they wanted to. Um, it was a media term, okay. So they wanted to reclaim it, so they decided they wanted to call it b-boy. Like this is our identity. So that's what b-boy means, right? I've always wondered. I seriously. Oh, okay. B-boy yeah. is just yeah. a, is it a break dance or it could be somebody who doesn't break? It's but the, it's the, I guess that's the quintessence. That's the actual name. Okay. Uh, that they that's what they want. I mean, I guess it existed a long time ago, but they decided this is what we're going to reterm it. Okay. Uh, for the media. So now whenever like all those uh, America's Best Dance crew, they're like b-boy, b-boy. Okay. Break dance. But I prefer to call myself a breaker. Okay. Because that's what we, when we came up, that's what we knew. So the was. two terms I used were both wrong. All right. But, <laughs> but yeah, I still break. I have a crew called Chicago Tribe. This really? is our uh, lo logo. We, okay. A lot of us have this. Where do you, where do you break? Um, par like traveling, competitions. Um, mo I don't compete as much. I'm, I'm really busy. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, we have, uh, it's like a, we started in 94, and we have like generations, and we recruit new members every so often. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of kids in high school, a lot of uh, older members. Oh, cool. And, uh, One thing you said that I yeah. thought was really interesting in an interview, you said the b-boy mentality is just insecurity. Yeah. Uh, the b-boy mentality is basically folding your arms and being tough. It's defensive. It's insecurity for the sake of earning respect, but it's fun to be insecure sometimes. I love that quote. Um, is, there, is there a lot of insecurity in hip-hop in general? I mean, it's like being a little kid, you know? Yeah. It's like... It's me, I'm gonna diss you. <laughs> what about with rappers? Like you look at like Kanye West or Rhymefest. They don't seem insecure it's at fun. all. Oh. Are they? Of course. Really? Yeah. I mean, Kanye made a song about it. Rhymefest 
most of his songs are about him. Yeah. It's like poking fun at the fact that, you know, you don't know everything. Uh-huh. I mean, that's what... Even though all of rap songs are about being the best, it's I mean, kind of that... Because no one really thinks they're the best. <laughs> they want to be the best. Sure, sure, sure. So, yeah. I mean, I want to be the best at what I do. You know? mm-hmm. So, it's like you count everything. Even those videos, like, if that video is good, it's because I'm insecure. I'm like... I need people to think I'm good, so I right. have to do the best I can do. I think that's what motivates yeah, yeah, right. people to do Nobody anything. thinks they are what they want to be, so they, do, they overcompensate and become that. Right, right. And it's the circle of life. <laughs> 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 Tell me how you hooked up with Rhymefest. How did that whole... Because you've uh, done four videos now with him? Yeah, officially. Okay. Uh, and then, we, I mean, we've done lots of different things, but we've been friends since, um, man, for like, it's 12 or 13. We've been friends since we were teenagers. Uh-huh. Um, I was just a breaker in the, in the hip hop scene, just going to parties, battling, causing problems. And he was a rapper on the scene, battling, mm-hmm. causing problems. And we, we ended up um, just becoming cool. Um, I incorporated, I, I think uh, we just, I interviewed him a couple times. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he quit rapping at a certain point. He, he, he uh, had a kid and he got married and stuff mm-hmm. when he was very young. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we still had friends after he left the rap scene. So mm-hmm. um, we, were, we became, you know, we were legitimate friends besides hip hop. And then, uh, he decided to get back into it, and it, it worked out. And I was doing my thing, he was doing his thing, so it was just, it made sense. So. Did you film any of his kind of epic battles that he had with people? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, a lot. Did, so. he, did he, there was one guy, I think it was, was it Juice that you filmed a battle he had with Eminem, which was kind of became a legendary battle? Uh, that's actually a really interesting, complex story. Well, we got time. Uh, well, <laughs> that's why we're here. <laughs> Uh, Unless you yeah, want to bring that guy up again. <laughs> well, I got other friends. I got other friends. <laughs> you can bring up anybody at any given time. <laughs> well, give me the story. Give me a little bit of it. Um, the story. Well, um, what happened? They, uh, Ryan Fist, it was a political, you know what? It was a long time ago. It was a political, there was a political situation. Ryan Fist beat Eminem, but something about the way they were running the battle. Oh, no. Ryan Fist was supposed to battle Juice. Mm-hmm. Um, but they made an agreement. Okay. Him and Juice were two MCs from Chicago that would travel around and compete. Mm-hmm. And they made an agreement that if, if they both got to the finals, that um, they wouldn't battle each other for this for Chicago, not for themselves. Okay. And I and from what I know, they made that agreement, and then at that battle, Ryan Fist beat Eminem, and then they were supposed to compete in the finals, and they're just like, I don't, you know, I, I'm not going to battle him. And then Juice is like, Well, I'm going to battle. Really? So, from what I know. I okay. mean, I wasn't there. This is yeah. right here. So yeah. I'm not saying it's a fact, but that's a story that I know. Telling the story here is not going to get me in any trouble, is it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's why I told it. <laughs> so that, you know, so it, this is, I mean, this is, it's interesting stuff, man. But We had a, a hip-hop poet. I don't know if you know him, Kevin Koval. He was, he's a local guy. He was on the show. And, yeah, yeah. And, and he said one of the hopes in hip-hop center, he was talking about white being white and being in hip-hop. And he said... One of the hopes in hip-hop-centered space is that it makes whiteness visible. We spend so much time just thinking white is normal because it is so entrenched in dominant culture that we never really have to wrestle with or deal with whiteness. What's your take kind of on being a white person in hip-hop? Uh, you know, it's funny because I never really, maybe other people think about that. Mm-hmm. Never really thought about it. I always just thought about like what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I always just did what I liked. It was never, even my, all my friends. It was never irrelevant. It was just like, you are this person. Mm-hmm. So it's along the lines of, 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 of my goals and my dreams. So mm-hmm. yeah, it, it, it really, I mean, yeah, people may bring up things and just joke, you know, whatever. But it, I mean, that's, uh, I, th- I find it irrelevant. Okay. I guess people think it's interesting. I mean, I guess I wouldn't be asked the question otherwise, but. I thought it was kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> interesting enough to ask it. <laughs> I think it's less and less interesting as time goes on. You okay, know, I'd agree more with that. More. But I mean, I, mean I, I understand the question, you know, why you would ask the question, but. Uh, um, well, when did you get into hip hop? Uh, when I was a kid, like when I, I was always, I was dancing, like I was always into dancing and I was, mm-hmm. um, I was into um, house music and house dancing. And then, uh, see, so yeah, it was always about like the ultimate. I like the ultimate stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, I was, like, I was very competitive. And okay. I used to battle in, like, house. I was, like, 12 okay. or whatever. And then uh, um, I think one day, da- I used to compete against this other dancer. And all these, dis- like, school dances. And then uh, I think the DJ brought a dancer with him one time. And then we were both dancing. And then we were, like, oh, let's go against this other dancer that, that the DJ brought. He's an outsider, right? And then uh, the guy come out. And instead of house dance, he started breaking. Hmm. And I was, like, oh, I can't. <laughs> I was, like, oh, shit. 
I was like, I can't compete with that. I was like, what is that? And then I was like, I saw his moves and I tried to do the moves the rest of the dance in, 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 in the corner. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, that's when I started breaking. Uh -huh. And um, Was the music always I just, part of it? The mu oh yeah, I mean, yeah. music, yeah. It's, music's, I mean, yeah, music's everything to okay. me, you know? And then, um, but yeah, but that, it was like, I was like, oh, that's better than the house. Like, that's the ultimate thing. Like, whatever's the ultimate, I was like, yeah, that, that's what yeah. I want to do, you know? Okay. So, um, yeah, but. You've also been working on, for years, I hear, a kind of a documentary about Chicago hip hop. Yes. What's, where is that at? Still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is this going to be like on your deathbed, you deliver it? <laughs> you give it to the nurse and say, <laughs> put this up on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Tony. That's my friend Tony. Okay. Tony. <laughs> remember when I asked you to do the interview? Well, tell me about some scenes in it. Um, like, where does it begin for you? Uh, well, I, it's funny because I actually edited the whole thing in 2000. Yeah. Or not, well, almost the whole thing in 2000. But then, like, if you looked at that now, it looks like it was made in 2000. Sure. And I was, like, only, like, you know, 19 or 20. 20 Why do hip-hop people do that? You make something, yeah. you don't put it out, then you throw it away and redo it. Rhymefest just did that with yeah, his album. Yeah, that happens all day. With I get a new song from Rhymefest every other day. <laughs> and, like, I, I have, like, a lot of songs from Rhymefest that don't come, haven't come out. But, uh, yeah, I make stuff all the time that doesn't come out. Um, sometimes it's just about the right time. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, like, some things I make and I know it's not now – but I have it in my pocket. I know, like, when I feel it, it'll be right. So. I just put out whatever piece of crap I produce. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about, when I think about, like, if I think about southern hip-hop. Okay. I can picture a sound, kind of the, yeah, the yeah. crunk sound. If I picture L.A., it's kind of got that smooth synthesizer. It's perfect for, you know, driving around on the Whistles. freeways while Dre intoxicated. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a Chicago sound? It doesn't uh, seem like there is. It's not. A, it's not. A, it's not a sound. It's a mentality. Which is what? It's a uh, um, sensibility. Okay. Uh, just an awareness um, and an attitude, I think. Because um, yeah, there's a problem with the styles, I think. Okay. Just because of the segregation of the city. Okay. Which is based on the rivers, by the way. Hmm. What do you mean? Like the, um, you know, when they settled here and then they built the city, they, it was all based. I mean, all the economics are based around the lake and right. the rivers that right. ran from the lake. And you had, uh, like, if this is downtown, you had uh, this lake and you had this lake. You created the north side, the west side, and the south side. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, like... You can just point to the map here. <laughs> and it's it decided where. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the settler said, someday <laughs> hip-hop will <laughs> sound different because this of this. This is for hip-hop. This <laughs> is for hip -hop. <laughs> <laughs> this will define the. Way. So, what is the mentality? Um, of, Chi well, of Chicago. Uh, it's um. I think it's just. I know that's a hard. That's kind of. Well, e e even like going away f out of town for a while and coming back, you feel like the the groundedness of someone from Chicago. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people will say a hater or whatever because like you know they feel like it's hard to be successful here because there's a lot of people around. Everybody wants to pull you down because they want to be. Mm -hmm. successful and if they can't do it you know so uh i think there's something about just being like people are in sh chicago are concerned about you being like uh legitimate or or or, or uh or, or genuine okay so they look for you to be they're like waiting for you to fuck up but if you're genuine they're like you know, <laughs> it's something very honest sure you sure. know i remember common i interviewed common like in 99 okay and he was like yeah, he was like, he was just like something about, they can always tell if you're lying, like something like, it's just very straightforward, I think. I heard he was just a really like peaceful guy, common. I mean, when yeah. I saw him, he punched me, so. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> you, all right, <laughs> why? Because look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bad habit. <laughs> Kanye West ever punch you? I punched him. <laughs> no, not yet. Why do all these guys leave? Oh, okay. Kanye had a really good analogy for that. I was like, I thought it was the best one I ever got. Okay. And who better to get it? Uh, he said, this is a long time ago, but he said, um, why would I, he's like, if I'm a doctor, if I'm an elephant doctor. Yeah. That's what he said. He said, if I'm an elephant Because that's not his next move. <laughs> <laughs> if I were going to be an elephant doctor in a hypothetical situation. Okay. <laughs> um, then, uh, then why would I, you know, how could I stay here? Well, we've got, all, a great, all, we've got a great zoo. <laughs> great. Well, and a very sick elephant well, there kills, right now. That kills the whole analogy. Like, what can I say? Then you're, you know what? You're right. You're right. He was right. He was, you know. 
What's, <laughs> what's next for you? You got this uh, video, and then... But he, but he, no, but, but okay, he, but he, back, to the, back to the analogy of the elephant. Really no, but, but it, I thought it was good. He was like, um, I got to go to Africa. Like, I got to be where it is. You know? Right. So he was like, that's why I went to New York. And I, I respect him. I like it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, he said it better. But uh, what were you saying? What's your next... Uh, you got the video. You got to finish this. Yeah. And then what do you got after that? After I finish this... Don't know. I don't know if I'll finish this. <laughs> uh, uh, after I finish this, yeah, I actually, actually have a, I know what I'm doing. I, which I'm is? I'm doing a behind the scenes of uh, uh, Alligator Boots, which is, uh, it's like the making of uh, a t the Kanye and Rifus TV show. Oh, right. Like Comedy the, Central. The puppet show. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing that. I'm doing another, planning another video with Fest, um, and a couple of secret things. All right. Well, will you come back and talk about them? Man, I'll come back anytime. This is awesome. All right. I'm Tony happy. Rock, everyone. Yeah. And <laughs> what's the fun thing? What? Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> Tony the Hulk. Yeah. And Tony the Hulk. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, happy anniversary. Thanks, man.